best practices for using bilateral stimulation with children. This is adapted from the July Childhood Trauma Newsletter by Beth Tyson. We're going to explore best practices with a trauma-informed technique called bilateral stimulation or BLS. This can help you deepen your attachment with children while fostering healing and resilience in the nervous system. Whether a child has experienced trauma or you simply want to enhance your connection, bilateral stimulation can be a valuable tool in your caregiving toolkit. Bilateral stimulation is used to calm the trauma response. BLS involves simultaneously engaging both sides of the body or brain to promote relaxation emotional regulation, and integration of experiences. It's based on the understanding that bilateral movement activates the brain's natural healing processes, including reducing anxiety and stress responses. This may sound too good to be true, but I've witnessed BLS work for many children and adults. Just think about the way you feel after participating in the following activities. Taking a walk outside, riding a bike, reading a book, dancing, rocking in a hammock or swing. All of these activities have something in common. They all involve some form of bilateral stimulation to your brain and body. At this point, scientists are unclear how or why BLS works, but they believe it has a calming effect on our limbic system, which allows our brain body to relax naturally. There are various ways to incorporate more bilateral stimulation into your daily routines with younger and older children. And you don't need to know all of the science for it to work. Let's explore a few more examples. Let's look at playful movement. When you notice a child's emotions are ramping up, it can help to engage them in activities that involve bilateral movement, such as playing catch, jumping jacks, or dancing together. These activities stimulate both hemispheres of the brain and body, which promotes coordination, concentration, and emotional regulation. Cross lateral movements. Encourage your child or teen to engage in exercises that involve crossing the midline of their body, <clears throat> such as marching while touching opposite knees or doing cross body arm movements through yoga. These movements stimulate the left and right brain hemispheres, which helps to calm the nervous system. Then there's eye movements. Eye movements can also be a form of bilateral stimulation. You can create simple exercises where your child follows an object or your finger as you move it from left to right. This can be done sitting face to face or through games like I Spy. You can ask the child to find something on the right side of the room and then find something on the left side. Reading is my number one way to encourage BLS. It's one of the reasons we get so tired when we read at night. I began reading at night during the pandemic and it knocked me right out. 
I thought it might have something to do with BLS, and I was right. Research shows that reading stimulates both brain hemispheres as our eyes move back and forth across the page. Then there's ta tapping or drumming. Gentle tapping or drumming on the body or a hand drum, alternating between the left and right sides, can provide soothing and regulating sensory input. For babies and young children, you can tap their shoulders, arms, or hands, paying attention to their comfort level and preferences. You can encourage older children to play the drums or tap on their chairs or table when they feel nervous. In many cultures, drumming is a regular part of the healing process and we can learn a thing or two from incorporating more drumming into our lives. Then there's rocking or swaying. Encourage activities where the child can swing, rock, or sway. I don't think it's a coincidence that there's a swing set on every playground, almost. <laughs> Swinging and rocking feel good to the body and reminds us of the rocking motion we experienced in the safety of our mother's womb. Invite your child to rock in a chair or lay down and gently rock their body back and forth before bedtime. Best practices for bilateral stimulation with children. When working with children who have experienced trauma, it's essential to approach bilateral stimulation with sensitivity and a trauma-informed lens. Here are some considerations to keep in mind. Consent and choice. Always seek a child's permission before engaging in bilateral stimulation activities. Explain the action step by step and allow them to have a choice in the activity. Respect their boundaries and comfort levels throughout the process. If the child appears distressed, stop the BLS. Safety and regulation. Ensure the child feels safe and regulating, regulated before attempting bilateral stimulation. This may involve creating a calm and predictable environment, setting clear boundaries, and offering support if they become overwhelmed. We always use a slow and gentle approach. Introduce bilateral stimulation gently, gradually allowing your child to build trust and familiarity with the technique. Start with short sessions, one minute, and progressively increase the duration if their comfort level improves. Emotional support. Remain attuned to your child's emotional state during bilateral stimulation. Offer reassurance, validate their feelings, and create space for open communication. If your child becomes distressed, be prepared to provide comfort and help them regulate their emotions by remaining calm and compassionate. Remember, trauma-informed bilateral stimulation aims to empower the child, support their emotional well-being, and enhance your connection. Always prioritize their needs and seek professional guidance if you have concerns about their mental health or trauma history. Incorporating BLS into your interactions with children can create a nurturing environment that fosters healing, emotional regulation, and a stronger bond.